one hear, O Lord our God, graciously hear us, guilty of sinning before you. Attende Domine et miserere quia peccavimus tibi. King high exalted, all the world's redeemer, to thee thy children lift their eyes with weeping. Christ, we implore thee, hear our supplication. Draw near, O Lord our God, graciously hear us, guilty of sinning before you. We, thy eternal majesty entreating, make lamentation in thy holy hearing. Graciously grant thou to our sins forgiveness. O oh, hear our entreaties, Lord, and show thy mercy, for we are sinners before thee. Spare thy people, Lord, spare thy people. See us here before thee. Be not angry, Lord, with thy people forever. That was from the Adoramus Hymnal. Produced by Adoramus in cooperation with the Church Music Association of America. Published by Ignatius Press, San Francisco, 1997. And that was from the CD set, Disc 2, for uh, Lent, numbers 360 to 366 uh, in the book, or numbers 59 to 65 on the CD. At number 402 in the Adoramus Hymnal. Ah, holy Jesus, how hast thou offended that man to judge thee hath in hate pretended thy foes derided by thine own rejected, O oh, most afflicted, who was the guilty who brought this upon thee? Alas, my treason, Jesus hath undone thee. T'was I, Lord Jesus, I it was denied thee. I crucified thee. Lo, the good shepherd, for the sheep is offered. The slave hath sinned, and the son hath suffered for man's atonement, while he nothing heedeth. God intercedeth. For me, kind Jesus, was thine incarnation, thy mortal sorrow, and thy life's oblation, thy death of anguish, and thy bitter passion, for my salvation. Therefore, kind Jesus, since I cannot pay thee, I do adore thee, and will ever pray thee. Think on thy pity and thy love unswerving, not my deserving. That was Hertz Liebster Jesu. Translated by Robert Bridges from a text by Johann Fellmann. <clears throat> and the Stations of the Cross are from the Holy Week uh, booklet of 2023 of by Magnificat, volume 25, number two. 
page 168, The Via Crucis, The Way of the Cross, by Father Philip Nolan, Dominican. We are convinced that the way of the cross of the Son of God was not simply a journey to the place of execution. We believe that every step of the condemned Christ, every action, every word, as well as everything felt and done, by those who took part in this tragic drama, continues to speak to us in his suffering and death too. Christ reveals to us the truth about God and man. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And this hymn with the tune of Stabat Mater, Jesus Lord Condemned Defiled, is from the Way of the Cross with text from scriptures by published by Cotton Barton in 1965. Jesus, Lord, condemned, defiled, may we too be meek and mild as we tread your holy way. May we feel no bitter hatred when we too are persecuted, left alone to walk with you. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. O God, whom I praise, do not be silent, for wicked and treacherous mouths attack me. Psalm 109, 2. Meditation. Why was the innocent Jesus condemned? Fears of revolution? A desire to maintain the status quo? Mob mentality? In the end, any reasons fall away when we hear only the harsh repetition, crucify him. The more attentively we listen to those words, the more we hear our own voices in the crowd. We hear our own false protests of innocence. We see our willingness to condemn others in order to save face. But Jesus did not protest. He opened not his mouth and set out on the way to Golgotha for us. Lord Jesus, help me to live in the truth of my need for you. Come to my assistance and open my lips to praise your merciful name. Now the cross, as Jesus bore it, has become for us who share it, the jeweled cross of victory. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Lord, do not punish me in your anger. In your wrath, do not chastise me. My iniquities overwhelm me, a burden too heavy for me. Psalm 38, verses 2 and 5. When Jesus told his disciples, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, Matthew 11.30, he knew the cross he would carry. He knew that it would lie painfully on his bleeding shoulders. He knew all this. Yet his yoke is easy because his love bears all things, 1 Corinthians 13.7. He bore his cross in order to bring us to the Father. When we think of all the evil in the world and in our hearts, the sin, the suffering, the numbness of despair. Do we remember that his love bears all things? We often consider the evils. Do we consider the love that overcomes? Lord Jesus, I bear many burdens. Teach me to love so that I may know that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Weak and prodded, cursed and fallen, his whole body bruised and swollen. Jesus tripped and lay in pain. 
the third station. Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I am stooped and deeply bowed. Every day I go about mourning. Psalm 38, 7. Our Lord fell upon the dirt and stones of the street. He tasted dust. It was for this that he had come, to save us who are prone to decay. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Genesis 3.19 He fell upon the stones, so that even if all his followers should forsake him, the very stones of Jerusalem would cry out as witnesses. He fell on the streets of that city with a heart full of mercy for the whole world. Its stones are dear to your servants. Its dust moves them to pity. Psalm 102.15 Lord Jesus, you fell for me in order to raise me up from the depths. When I fall, give me the confidence to begin again, to pick up my cross and to follow you. The fourth, we adore you, the fourth stage, no, excuse me. Jesus met his grieving mother, she who made the Lord our brother. Now the sword her heart has pierced. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Listen, my daughter, and understand. Pay me careful heed. Forget your people and your father's house, that the king might desire your beauty. Psalm 45, 11 through 12. Meditation. Throughout her life, Mary prayed and listened and pondered and understood, little by little. Now she met her son bloodied and beaten. She again placed her trust in God and proclaimed his greatness. Her soul was pierced by sorrow, but she trusted that her son was God's promise of mercy for every generation. Even then, Jesus knew that he would send his mother to console countless of his followers. Through the centuries to come, Mary, the mother of mercy, comforts all who walk after her son on the way of the cross. Lord Jesus, help me to see with the eyes of faith. May every sorrow and suffering in my life and in the lives of those I love manifest the mystery of your redemption. Simon stopped in hesitation, not foreseeing his proud station, called to bear the cross of Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Simon of the fifth station, Simon of Cyrene, helps Jesus carry the cross. Look upon me, have pity on me. For I am alone and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and bring me out of my distress. Psalm 25, 16 through 17. Meditation. Suffering, it is said, is the place of the deepest loneliness. Who can know in all detail, all precision, what another carries? Certainly, as he carried his cross, our Lord knew the darkest depths of loneliness. Is there any pain like my pain? Lamentation 1.12. Christ could have carried his cross all alone. But since we cannot carry ours without God, he did not carry his without Simon. Even in the worst isolation, God remains close. For it is the Lord your God who marches with you. He will never fail you or forsake you. Deuteronomy 31.6. Lord Jesus, relieve the loneliness of my heart. Give me the humility to accept the help I need and the strength to help those in need. Brave but trembling came the woman. None but she would flaunt the Roman. 
moved by love beyond her fear. <coughs> We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus meets Veronica. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Come, says my heart, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Psalm 27, 8 through 9. Meditation. If we let it, our need for happiness, for truth, for love, for God, spurs us on in a great search. As the author Walker Percy once wrote, the search is what anyone would undertake if he were not sunk in the everydayness of his own life. Veronica, like all of us, was searching. And in response to her act of mercy, Christ entrusted to her the true image of what she was searching for, the face of God. Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, Colossians 1, 15, makes visible the invisible love of the Father. In his bloodied face, in his eyes, we glimpse the promise of the end of our search and the source of all desiring. Lord Jesus, never let me settle for anything less than you. Fill me with the desire to seek your face every moment of every day. Prostrate on the dust he crumbled, flogged in body he resembled. All our brothers scorned and poor. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. I am numb and utterly crushed. I wail with anguish of heart. Psalm 38, 9. Meditation. Think of all the repeated afflictions Jesus suffered. Repeated threats to his life. Repeated betrayals. Repeated scourges. And now, repeated falls. He had prayed that this cup might pass him by. And yet, how he wished that the baptism with which he was to be baptized would be accomplished. He loved us as he fell. He loved us as he struggled once again to get to his feet. When we think of this love, how foolish are those moments when we give in to despair. Lord Jesus, grant me hope that your salvation will be accomplished in me. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. May our sympathy for Jesus turn to those who here now need us. May we see Christ bruised in them. The Eighth Station. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The Eighth Station. Jesus comforts the women of Jerusalem. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat weeping when we remembered Zion. Psalm 137.1 Meditation God instructed the prophet Ezekiel to walk through Jerusalem and mark an X, a key, a cross, on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the abominations practiced within it. Ezekiel 9.4 This X protected the mourners, from God's destroying angel, because in their mourning they had shown their love for God. When Christ instructs the women of Jerusalem to weep for themselves and their children, he is calling them to mourn what needs to be mourned in their lives. By mourning, they set limits on that evil. By mourning, they discover the seed of repentance. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. Lord Jesus, may I weep tears of sorrow over the evils I have committed. 
May those tears cleanse and purify my heart so that I may love you and my neighbor more perfectly. Jesus fell again in weakness, stumbling as we do to lead us through our sorrow and our pain. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The ninth station, Jesus falls a third time. My heart shudders, my strength forsakes me, the very light of my eyes has failed. Psalm 38, 11. Jesus experienced the utter emptiness of human weakness, a tiredness beyond words, a pain beyond expression. He emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Philippians 2, 7-8. He humbled himself to the point of of falling a third time as his body broke down, exhausted to the extreme. But God's power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. How wonderful it is that the humility of acknowledging our weakness and need is the very path to victory in Christ. Lord Jesus, in my weakness, let me know your strength. As you have humbled yourself in taking on my humanity, so raise me up to share in your divinity. Stripped and jeered by his own nation, Jesus stood in desolation, giving all he had to give. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore, the, oh, we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. They divided my garments among them, for my clothing they cast lots. Psalm twenty-two, nineteen, Meditation. There is a kind of shame that keeps us from God. Ashamed of our sins, we do not want to bring them to the physician. Like Adam and Eve, we are ashamed of our nakedness and hide. Perhaps we try to convince ourselves that they are nothing to be ashamed of, or perhaps we know their shamefulness and let it rule us. But for the sake of the joy that lay before him, Jesus endured the cross, despising its shame. Hebrews 12, 2. Jesus knew that he stood innocent before the omniscience of the Father. He offers us, through his mercy, a path to a share in that innocence. St. Francis of Assisi wanted to follow naked the naked Christ. May we do the same. Jesus, Lord, nothing is hidden from your sight. Free me to stand before you without shame, holy and righteous in your sight all the days of my life. Pierce the hands that blessed and cured us. Pierce the feet that walked to free us. Walked the hill of a Calvary. The eleventh station, we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. Psalm 22, 17 to 18. Meditation, page 175. Saints have said that Psalm 22 is so descriptive of the Passion that it seems more like a gospel than a prophecy. It tells of a man rejected, condemned, pierced, and mocked. As a prophecy, the psalm reveals that God had planned our salvation for generations. Christ's life unrolls that plan like a tapestry. What a plan it is. See what love the Father has bestowed on us. 1 John 3.1 that he should send his son to be nailed willingly to a tree for our sake. If the prophecies about Christ become true, how sure is our hope that his promise of our salvation will be true as well. Lord Jesus, you came to accomplish all that had been foretold by the prophets. Fulfill in our lives the promise of redemption that you make to those who follow you.
life eternal, death defiant, bowed his head, the world was silent. Through his death came life anew. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why so far from my call for help, from my cries of anguish? Psalm 22, 2. Meditation. Jesus loved us to the end. In that moment, knowing all was finished, he let out his cry, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? It is a cry that rings again and again on the lips of those in that final moment of struggle, when abandonment seemed to threaten. It is right to express that anguish to God. But anguish does not have the last word. At this moment of the greatest struggle, our Lord breathed forth the spirit of life on us all, and the moment of death became a moment of triumph. As he breathed forth his spirit, abandonment was no more, and a new age dawned upon the world. Lord Jesus, by your death, you won life for us. Be with all those facing the hour of their death, and give each of us the courage we need to face our final struggle. Stunned and stricken, Mary, mother, in your arms was placed our brother, full of grace, now filled with grief. The 13th station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I am reckoned with those who go down to the pit. I am like a warrior without strength. My couch is among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave. Psalms 88, 5 through 6. Meditation. He is taken down from the cross. He did not remain above, but descended to us. Now Mary holds the dead body of her son. She gazes on her son, for whose death she bore no guilt. We, on the other hand, gaze on the one we have pierced. But there is no condemnation in the scene. She holds her son's body as a gesture of offering, offering him as he offered himself for us. If while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more? Once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Romans 5, 10. Lord Jesus, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Jesus, Lord, your gift accepted, in three days you resurrected. You did first what we shall do. The 14th station, Jesus is placed in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Where can I go from your spirit? From your presence where can I flee? If I ascend to the heavens, you are there. If I lie down in Sheol, you are there. Psalm 139, 7 through 8. Meditation. As a baby, he lay in swaddling clothes in a manger. Now dead, he lies in burial clothes in a tomb. He does not leave any part of our life untouched by his presence. Behind and before you encircle me and rest your hand upon me. Psalm 139, 5. There is no distance too far for him, no abyss too wide for him. not even death, no isolation too remote for him. He overcomes even death, even the grave. His body lies still for a few short days as the mysterious plan of God triumphs in the hidden depths. Soon his victory will be announced once for all. Lord Jesus, you gave everything to win salvation for your people. Help us joyfully to cooperate in your passion as we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Jesus risen, be our brother, in our food and in each other. Lead us home to heaven with you. 
All who sleep in the earth will bow low before God. All who have gone down into the dust will kneel in homage. I will live for the Lord. My descendants will serve you. The generations to come will be told of the Lord, that they may proclaim to a people yet unborn the deliverance you have brought. Psalm 22, 30 to 32. Father Philip Nolan is a Dominican priest of the Providence of, Providence of St. Joseph. He was ordained to the priesthood in 2022 and lives in Washington, D.C. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there? when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew from the 27th chapter. beginning with the 27th verses, verse. When the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and they gathered the whole battalion before him, they stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him, and plating a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat upon him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they were marching out, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. This man had what they compelled to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink, mingled with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. 
Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, saying, Eli, 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 lama sabachthani, which is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly this was the Son of God. There were also many women there, looking on from afar, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. O oh, sacred head surrounded by crown of piercing thorn, O oh, bleeding head so wounded, reviled and poor to scorn, the power of death comes o'er you, the glow of life decays, yet angel hosts adore you and tremble as they gaze. In this your bitter passion, good shepherd, think of me. With your most kind compassion, unworthy though I be, beneath your cross abiding, forever would I rest. In your dear love confiding, and with your presence blessed, what language shall I borrow? To thank you, dearest friend, for this your dying sorrow, your mercy without end. Lord, make me yours forever, a loyal servant true, and let me never, never outlive my love for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
O my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, but most of all because they offend thee, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell on the third day. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. O oh Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your death upon the cross and for all that led up to it. Your incarnation, your taking on yourself our struggle in the fullness of our human nature. You dwelt with us in body in all of our struggles and difficulties. You gave us yourself and are the all-sufficient sacrifice upon the cross, once offered for us, but truly present here in the Eucharist. And grant that we might live in the power of faith to the glory of the resurrection. Amen.
Yeah. 